This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concept Sports Podcast, where we discuss everything there is to know in the world of sports. I'm Ben. Hey, I'm Alex. And we are back here on a Thursday to record Mm -hmm. more episodes for your listening pleasure. I was just thinking those words. You said them right before I could say them. Just word for word? Mm Mm-hmm. Were you? Yeah. Okay, so here's something that we started doing, but we forgot to do it on the last couple episodes, Mm -hmm. and that's the fun fact of the day before we start the show. And Ben has one today. I have one for you, okay? Okay. I'm going to sort of give you a guess here. I'm going to let you try and guess what the answer is. Okay. About how long in your lifetime do you think you spend sleeping? Isn't it something like nine years? It's about 25 years. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a long time. That is a super long time. Yeah. And I was try- when I heard this, I was trying to think about, well, you know, if you sleep eight hours a day, you're looking at in three days, you're sleeping really one day. So it's like, it kind of makes sense. What if we were to somehow develop something where you didn't have to sleep? You'd have so much more of your life back. You 25 years? You can't. I know, not I know it's sleep. not going to happen, but I'm saying it's like, wouldn't that be kind of cool? I guess. I mean, I, like, think, I feel think like about it's it, something people don't realize. Like, think about it this way. You're kind of, it's obviously something you need sleep, but mm-hmm. you're kind of wasting 25 years well, of your life. Well, I mean, life. think about it. You're not necessarily wasting it, you know? You're choosing to do it. You're choosing no, to but sleep. You, no, you need sleep. Yeah. Well, I mean, you also like, I choose to go to sleep. Yeah, some, I mean, some people sleep more than others, of course, and some people need more sleep than others, but... And some people wake up at 5.30 in the morning every weekend like you, so... Even during the week, too, like me, so... You're a weird cat, you know that? Hey, that's okay. You want to know what I'm doing right now? You want to know why the reason I wake up so early on the weekends? I know the reason, but you can It's for soccer. And what am I doing right now? I'm watching the Champions League draw. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah. Well, speaking of soccer, you know what I've been doing all week? What's that? I've been getting my conditioning up. I've been getting my fitness level up playing FIFA in preparation for one day when I challenge you. I had a game yesterday. I had a game yesterday. I won seven to two. I rolled him. I'm like, you know what? My fitness level is higher than it's ever been. Soon enough, soon enough, he's mine. I'm taking him down. Are you sure you even want to challenge me? Sometimes. We're we're gonna we need to make this happen. Sometimes I I think. When FIFA 17 comes out, we will make it happen. Okay. Okay? I will make sure it happens. Who do you get to play with, though? I don't care who I play with. I'll let you pick my team. Okay, I'll do that. You're going to have me be like... Ukraine. The Indian national team. Yeah. Or like Fiji from the Olympics, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be Barcelona. And you're going to be Real Madrid, just, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yep. But anyways, in you can be the, the Sounders, show. and I'll be Barcelona. That's not fair. Why would it be fair the first one you said? Well, it wouldn't. But anyways, so let's get into the show today. So we have a lot of great topics for everyone. Why don't you give everyone our lineup for today? All right. Well, first and foremost, we're going to talk about some news that just came across the docket, and that is baseball. He's been in the league for a while now, you could say. Jeff Francoeur. He just got t- traded and he was at least involved in a three-team trade. So that is something that just occurred. We'll talk about that here in a second. We're going to talk Hope Solo, women's national team soccer goalie Hope Solo. We'll talk about her in a second. Uh, in our second segment there, uh, recently suspended by the women's national soccer team. And then we're going to end the episode talking preseason week three preview. Starts tonight. I think the first game is something like six or seven tonight. So... It's uh, pretty exciting, Ben. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty excited. Are you excited, Ben? I, I'm never really excited about the you preseason. You guys got the Niners this week. Yeah. The yeah, first game's do. at five, second game's at seven. Atlanta but versus Miami and Dallas at Seattle. If anything, week three of the preseason is really known as your dress rehearsal. Mm-hmm. So this is the one time you can kind of get excited. 
Okay, Arsenal just drew, so I'm going to have to fill you in on what group they're in because I know you're going to be see, wanting yeah. to roast me to see who they're going to play. Mm-hmm. Because, but anyways, so I guess week three as a dress rehearsal is kind of exciting. You know what I mean? So you can see a lot of people play, a lot of the starters play at least the first quarter, maybe the first half in yeah. some instances. So It really depends on the player too, you know what I mean? Right, so you can kind of get an idea of where they're where they're going. So anyways, let's jump in. We talked about Jeff Rancourt. So Jeff Rancor of the Atlanta Braves has been involved in a trade, sending him to the Miami Marlins. It is a three-team trade, as you mentioned, with the Texas Rangers. So the Braves are going to get minor league infielder Dylan Moore from the Rangers and minor league catcher Matt Foley from the Marlins, while also sending cash to Miami. So part of this trade, the Braves will send Marlins $104,959 to help offset Francor's contract. The Rangers obtained two international signing slots from the Marlins and one from Atlanta. So Jeff Francoeur, really the big player in this deal. Miami Marlins need an outfielder after Giancarlo Stanton goes down with a thigh injury. Looks like he's going to be out the whole year. This is uh, something we talked about on the show a couple of weeks ago. Groin. Well, groin, thigh, close enough. You okay. know, I, I never understand how they – well, I do, but it's always weird to me. You have the trade deadline, yet you can do trades later in the season. They said to be put on waivers first. It's right. so weird to me. Like, it's a deadline. Make it a deadline. I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of. It is kind of. Do it the old school video game way. Just release them and pick them up on another team. That's a trade. Boom. Stupid. It is kind of different, but so as far as Frank Core goes, he's 32 years old. He really has not been doing too well lately. He's had a lot of injury problems. His last really close to full season was in 2012. As part of the Royals, he played in 148 games. He hit 16 home runs, had 49 RBIs, and only hit 235. But with Fran Cor, we have seen what he's capable of doing in the past. Think about what he did in 2005, 2006, 2007 with the Braves. Mm-hmm. A couple of those seasons, he had over 100 RBIs, hit as many as 29 home runs. So do you think this is a good move for the Marlins who need that outfield help with Giancarlo Stan going down? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I, th- I think it, especially with a team that currently still is in the in the race going, you know. I think it's I mean, you get a, a vetty I'm sorry a, a savvy veteran uh, on on your team somebody who's been around he's 32 years old like you said he's you know played well for a while now you know he had a good rookie year obviously he started very strong when he was younger played for a few different teams Mets Philadelphia at one point uh, I think it's good for them yeah you get you get somebody to I mean you don't necessarily fill the void in in which he left because Gene Carlo is a huge player, you know, it's a huge loss for them anytime you lose somebody like that, let alone a hitter like that. But I think, you know, bringing in somebody who not only has been there, not necessarily there before, you know, but been in that situation before and, you know, knows the game in and out, you know, getting a, a veteran, I think helps you in the long run. You yeah. Know, get somebody I, that knows how to how to do it. I definitely agree. I don't expect they're going to really expect much out of Frank Corr. As far as a production standpoint, I think they're definitely trying to look at Frank Cora as someone who may, can maybe mentor some young guys. Mm-hmm. Maybe can come in as a pinch hitter occasionally, a guy who can come off the bench in like a night day game, coming you know, yeah. getting a rest day. So, mm-hmm. not necessarily someone who can come in and step in right away and, and contribute, but someone who might be able to help younger guys and be like kind of a, a leader, a mm-hmm. clubhouse guy. Yeah, this for still, it's a young team for sure. You know. Yeah, and then there's, I mean, obviously you can't replace the. The output in which Giancarlo had, like, I don't know if you're saying he was hitting 249 this year with seven home runs and 33 RBIs for Frank Corr. I'm pretty sure at one point Giancarlo hit seven home runs in like a two week span, you know? Right. So, and I don't think, you know, Frank Corr obviously probably wasn't, ma- you know, he wasn't playing all every day. He had a good spring training, but he already said he wasn't going to take a AAA assignment. So he's kind of just been in that no man's land thing, not playing every day, obviously, you know, coming off the bench and so on, like you were saying. So, I think it's a good move. It's a good move for him. I mean, it's sad to see him leave his hometown team with Atlanta, you know. Um, apparently, he was really he just really liked it there. You know, the managers and the players really liked him there. But, you know, it's, it's, I feel like sometimes when you're in a slump, or not necessarily a slump, but like, you know, in the situation he was in, maybe he was not playing every day. It's nice to have good, like, new scenery, I suppose. Yeah. I think of it that way. Yeah, definitely. Miami, who's still sort of competing for that wild card spot, only a couple games back now with the Cardinals, they did need to make a move. With Giancarlo Stanton going out, they obviously did. They get some money involved in it as well, a little over 100K. I don't think you can say it's a bad deal. I don't expect, like I said, Frank Corr to contribute much as far as a production standpoint. But someone who can kind of be 
a clubhouse leader help Miami maybe get some of these younger guys to sort of rally over the injury of Stanton and maybe make some progress? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They had a great game last night. They ended up shutting out the Kansas City Royals, who were on a nine-game winning streak. They're led by Jose Fernandez, who absolutely at home is untouchable. So they still have some good core pieces to build on and try to push towards that wild card spot. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw Frank Core firsthand back in 2013 when the Giants signed him, and he didn't have an amazing time. He only played 22 games. You know, he only had a batting average of 194. But So I'm familiar enough with him other than, you know, in terms of the, the fan aspect, other than just you know, having him. Because he's been on a few teams, you know what I mean? Obviously, he started his career with the Braves, went to the Mets, went to the Rangers, Royals, then he went to the Giants, Indians, Padres. Eventually the Phillies and then back to Atlanta now. He's really a journeyman now. Yeah, it, it, and more so, especially the last few years. I mean, he played a lot of his career, obviously, with the Braves all the way through 2008 at least, and then finally went to the Mets in 2009. And then from there, it was like every year it was somewhere else, you know. Mets 2009, G Rangers and Royals 2010, then the Giants two, three years later, and then the, even, you know, the Indians next year, next year Padres, next year Phillies. So, yeah, like you said, he's really been more so a journeyman these last few years. Uh, I like to think this is a good situation for him, though. He's not to go in there. He's not to be the guy. He can play the pace he needs to play. I think he's in a good spot. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Me. I agree. And really with Miami, he comes into a place where there's opportunity, where he could actually get some playing time, mm -hmm. something he hasn't done in the last couple of years. So I think it's a good move for all parties involved. I agree with you. All right. Well, hey, we're going to take our first break. Come back. We're going to talk some national soccer news and hope solo. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And we're back here at the GSMC Sports Podcast. And we're going to throw it over to Ben. He's going to introduce the next bit of news. Go ahead, Ben. All right, so before we jump into talking about Hope Solo, you wanted to know who Arsenal was playing. Yeah, who are they going to lose to, man? Well, I think they're okay. So so the draw is still going on. So we only have – right now they're in pool three. So the third teams are getting revealed for each group, which have four teams in it. So Arsenal got matched up against Paris Saint-Germain from France, the French League winners. That's definitely a tough draw. Yep. that's uh, They're a good team, Ben. They're a great team. They're but they do not team. have Zlatan Ibrahimovic anymore because he is a member of Man United. Yeah, he's killing it right now. Yeah, Man United are so good, right? Not even in the Champions League. Boom! That's that's to do of last year. That team is 100% different last year than it was this year. Is this exactly. year. Exactly. Just wait till they play Arsenal, man. We'll see how many goals you guys give up. Okay. Okay. We might have to have a wager when that game happens. The first I don't game. bet money. It doesn't have to be money. I don't. Yeah, okay. Okay. We'll see about that. So anyway, so Stick Arsenal got matched up against Perry Saint-Germain, uh -huh. PSG. So okay. We'll, we'll have, have to update you on the groups eventually. Yeah, yeah, so, and of course, that. we'll be talking about them on the GSMC Soccer Podcast, of course. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, we're moving in talking about U.S. Women's National Team goalkeeper Hope Solo. Yesterday, Hope Solo was suspended six months from the national team for what the U.S. soccer called a conduct that is counter to the organization's principles. So after the United States were eliminated from the Rio Olympics in the quarterfinals by Sweden, they lost in a penalty shootout. It was one-to-one. -one. And then they lost in the shootout, of course. So the 35-year-old Solo criticized the winning Sweden team, calling it, quote, a bunch of cowards. These comments did not sit very well from uh, United States soccer president Sunil Gelati. want to say that the comments by Hope Solo after the match after Sweden during the 2016 Olympics were unacceptable and do not meet the standard of conduct we require from our national team players. Also, beyond the athletic arena and beyond the results, the Olympics celebrate and, pr and represent the ideals of fair play and respect. We expect all of our representatives to honor these principles with no exceptions. So, Alex, with Hope Solo out for six months, your thoughts? 
I mean, it's not the first time she's been suspended. You know what I mean? It's, she had 30 days last year for, I think it was the domestic abuse stuff. Yep. What they also called contact rela conduct related to an incident at the team's training camp as well. So, I mean, yeah. U.S. Soccer has terminated her contract, too, when it handed down the suspension, which is effective immediately. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. So she's currently not employed by them. Yeah, I mean, she came out and said, I couldn't be the player I am without being the person I am, even when I haven't made the best choices or said the right things. It just seems like this is, like, it's something different every, you know, few months with her. At least it has been since, you know, 2015 and 2014, you know. I I never you know expected this kind of stuff, but it just kind of showed up the last few years, and you're like, well, okay, well, what's going on here? You know, she's a great player for the United States, but you know, what's really going on? Yeah, leading up to the Olympics, she was really outspoken <clears throat> about really Rio and the conditions there. All but these... I mean, a lot of athletes were right, and and I guess it's rightfully due and rightfully so. But she seemed more outspoken than anyone I can really recall. And then all the reports going on during the Olympics was that, you know, I haven't even seen one mosquito yet. You know, you didn't really see any negative publicity, as, with the exception, in my opinion, of the diving pool that turned green. Yeah, that was weird. So, I think that had to do more with the upkeep of it than right. maybe so you didn't you know, see, sickness or something. You saw a lot of concerns going into the Olympics as far as all the conditions, but coming out of them, you didn't really hear anything about much. No, not really. Um, I, I didn't really hear anything about, you know, people getting – there was one person that got sick – but that was very early on, and who knows if that was related to anything anything that you know people were talking about heading into these Olympics. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, even then, I guess we won't really find out officially until maybe the first few weeks coming here now after the Olympics if people got sick. But as far as I know, it was a you know a solid Olympics, other than some of the issues within the nation itself, you know, with crime and such, and then you know, some of the stories coming out, but. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't definitely what it was made to be in that sense, and she was very adamant about that the entire time, too. Right, so you could say that all these comments going into them were definitely something that could be taken legitimate, but coming out of them, it's kind of like rubbish now because, you know, it was not as big of a deal as people were making it out to be, and she was really outspoken about it. <clears throat> so you could say that that's another bad thing that Hope Solo has said. She's definitely really outspoken. She's not afraid to speak her mind. I guess you can sort of condemn her for that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. You know, that's I, th I think that's something that you can sort of take for granted at times. I think it's a good quality. But she's definitely saying things that aren't really, I don't know if the appropriate is the word, but not something that is represented by the whole team, the whole mm -hmm. nation. You know, Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino <coughs> came out and said they did not sort of think that Hope Solo's comments were definitely something that they – personally agree with or think is really the case they thought really it was more of you know they were just a better team that day they had implemented a great strategy because hope solo was saying that they, she was calling them cowards because yeah, I, I got the quote here if you would like me to read it do do it buddy the, do it. I, guys i haven't read the entire quote i just heard the cowards thing so it says i also think quote she said i also think we played a bunch of cowards but you know the best team did not win today i strongly firmly believe that i think you saw america's heart you saw us give everything we had today unfortunately the better team did not win yeah, so she was definitely basically saying that Sweden did not play to win. They played not to lose mm -hmm. by playing really defensively, playing really counterattacking football, wanting to just really play for a draw and hope, best case scenario, they win in penalties. And that's really what happened. So she was seemed really kind of cowardly, ironically, kind of cowardly in, in my terms of what mm -hmm. she said, kind of like a sore loser you know, a sour loser. That's basically the comment she said, and no one came out in support of her. You know, like I said, Megan Rapino and Alex Morgan said that they did not personally agree with what she said. And now, really, U.S. soccer is doing the same thing, suspending her for six months. You look at now, you're going to have the World Cup, the Women's World Cup in three years. You have the Olympics in four years. Hope Solo is 35 years yeah, old. Yeah, I already didn't assume she'd be there anyways. Do you think this is the last we've seen of Hope Solo in a United States shirt unless they have some kind of tournaments you know up, upcoming next year i could very easily see it because i mean like, like you said they already terminated her contract so they'd have to work from there again to make another one and sign another one you know <clears throat> excuse me so i could i could definitely see that yeah yeah i agree with you jill ellis who's the coach of the women's national team has gone on to say that you know they're really focused on getting a lot younger getting a lot you know more physical to the core Hope Solo is a great goalkeeper, definitely one of the best women's goalkeepers in the world. Age with goalkeepers is really not much of a concern because they don't have as much physical 
Demand. I physical guess. demand on their body, you know what I mean? So you can play a lot older. You know, if you look at 35 as a player, you're pretty much done in my opinion. But as a goalkeeper, you can go on a little longer, almost like a kicker in the NFL. So you do have a few more years in there. But the way the sort of mindset is with U.S. soccer right now and what Jill Ellis said is that they're trying to get a lot younger and everything. Mm -hmm. So honestly, and Hope Solo, a great player, but she's just brought all this negative publicity to the team. I think she's really done. Like, I don't – after the six-month suspension, maybe they'll give her – like some sort of tryout, some sort of way to work her way back into the team. But I really don't see it happening. I, I, I think this is it for Hope Solo. I, no, really I, do. I think I agree with you. And we'll take our second break here in a second. But I was going to say, if anything, at the very end of the day, if you wanted to win the game, maybe you should stop the goals in the PKs. Well, I mean, it's easy to say that, but it's really not. I mm-hmm. look at penalty kicks as eh. kind of like the lottery because – Especially with the goalkeeper, you kind of have to just guess which way the ball is going. You don't really have a time to, oh, it's going to my left. I need to dive left. You know what I mean? You don't have really have time to do that. You kind of have to just hope that you dove the right way, <laughs> got in front of the ball. Hope. No pun intended there. Or really hope that you, someone pulls a Lionel Messi in the Copa America final and just skyrockets it Jeez. out of the stadium. You yeah. know what I mean? He, so, he kicked that thing back to back to Argentina. I mean, he definitely kicked it way harder than he should have. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it's a lot harder to say, oh, you should. It's a lot harder to do it than to say, oh, you should just stop those balls. You know, so eh, whatever. I and think... Hope Solo had a great Olympics. I mean, she did. I think it was really in the heat France, of the moment. But that second game against France, when it was a one nil win for United States, she, she made had a great game. three or four saves mm-hmm. that I, yeah. I thought were definitely going by her. Yeah, so, I know she had a great Olympics, and, and I think I really think it was the heat of the moment. But you know, you can't do that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I think she just really, like you said, he the moment got kind of carried away, really upset that she lost against, you know, Sweden, who Pia Sundhagen is the Sweden manager who is formerly the United States women's national team manager. So you have sort of a little rivalry there. Mm-hmm. I think she really just got carried away in the heat of the moment as well. I agree with you. All right. Well, I guess this might be the last we see of her in the United States women's national team soccer jersey. I think it's a good possibility. Mm, it's a shame. All right. Well, hey, we'll take our last break. Come back and we'll preview week three of the NFL preseason action. So don't go anywhere here at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And we are back here at the GSMC Sports Podcast. We're going to start our week three preseason action preview. Heading into tonight, Thursday, there are a couple games in the NFL. Friday, there's a lot more. But Thursday, we're going to start right now with two games. Atlanta and Miami. It is a televised game on NBC. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Atlanta uh, versus Miami in the Citrus Bowl. And Dallas is taking on Seattle up there in Century Link Field. That starts at 7 p.m. tonight in Tennessee. Pacific time. Pacific time, of course, our time over here in California. We have Dallas going up against Seattle. And a perennial a couple years ago you know, as a playoff matchup in the making. Um, I'm interested to see most uh, some starter action from Dallas, you know, see what goes on. Ezekiel Elliott's finally going to play. I do yeah, I was going to say we have the debut of Elliott. He's missed a few, couple, the first few games of the mm-hmm. preseason with the hammy. Mm-hmm. And we also, in, in, in relation to the other game, we have the debut so far, first preseason action in a Dolphins uniform for Aaron Foster tonight as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. Moving to Friday is the games I'm definitely looking forward to, and probably Ben has a little bit more of an eye on as well. You have New England and Carolina, and probably see the first Brady action in the no, preseason No, I don't care here. about that game. That's not what I'm talking about. You have Buffalo at Washington. Again, um, you know, not necessarily a game I'm really looking forward to, but again, you know, all these games I look forward to in a sense. Cleveland and Tampa Bay, probably see our most extended amount of time of RG3 under center there. And you could see the debut of Josh Gordon as well. Yes, but he's apparently I don't think he's going to get time with the starts. I think he's going to come in later in the game. Which, which is not really a big deal to me. I think with Gordon, you want to just... Just get him on level. the field yeah. facing that four-game suspension. You don't want to have him 
come right off the bench, never mm-hmm. played a snap yeah. week five. Mm-hmm. So, All right. So, uh, the Steelers are at New Orleans in the Mercedes-Benz Dome. Obviously, you know, that's a game I look forward to, finally seeing Ben and Brown and at least D'Angelo on the field at the same time, at least playing. Uh, I don't know if Bell's going to play. But at least see the starters to an extent. You know, you say that this is the dress rehearsal week, but it always does differ per player. You know, Jordy Nelson could play tonight, but who knows if he will. Or tomorrow really night, who knows it. if he will, or how, even if he does maybe, you know, a series or two. That brings me to the Green Bay game. They are at San Francisco at Le- uh, Levi Stadium. That's going to be an interesting game. Kaepernick's getting his first action of the preseason. Rodgers is, uh, is going to play this game. We're going to see some actual action from the starters. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to be interesting to see. Kaepernick actually gets some action because the offense for the Niners so far this preseason has looked terrible, looked bad. Yeah, Kaepernick now sort of getting thrown into that quarterback carousel. I'd say really only with in, yeah. Blaine Gabbert. Yeah. There was a lot of hype over Christian Ponder, what he did last week, <laughs> mm. but I I don't really take that very serious. No, I don't. You know, That's a guy that you know he's getting his first action on a, on a team he just got onto. The other team's not really you know familiar with it in that sense as well, so... Yeah, and I don't, I don't buy into that hugely. Moving to Saturday, you have just as many games there. You're going to have six games on Saturday. What's cool to me is every day so far this week, Monday through, I mean, Thursday through Sunday, there is a televised, national televised game. So that is cool. So starting with Kansas City at Chicago in Soldier Field, the eh, Soldier Field, if you like that turf, we're going to see some action there. Um, with Kansas City, I do know now that this past week, they got their running back back and Jamal Charles. I don't know how much action he's going to get there. Coming off an ACL tear as well. Something he's done twice now. <clears throat> two ACLs. Yes. So yes, that's going to be interesting to see. Tough to come back from one, let alone two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're going to be interested to see if he gets any time in this preseason game. Uh, moving to Baltimore at home against Detroit. We're going to see some uh, Joe Flacco action for the first time in the preseason. Looking forward to that. Obviously, uh, being a Steeler fan of Baltimore is in the conference, so it's interesting. Moving towards Lucas Oil Stadium action, Indianapolis hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if Wentz is day to day. I don't think he's going to play in this game, um, so I'm pretty I'm pretty sure he's not going to play in this game. Um, so more, just more Andrew Luck action. He looked good in last week's action. He did look good for the amount of time he was in, and then back to Philadelphia. You have just uh, some more extended action there with Sam Bradford. See some action from Chase Daniel there as a second backup quarterback. The game that happens every preseason that is a fun game to watch, and that's New York versus New York. The MetLife Stadium (coughs) battle. Yeah, the Jets technically hosting this one against the Giants. We're going to see, hopefully, I finally see some Hackenberg action. Haven't seen any Hackenberg action yet at all. We'll see if Bryce Petty can put on a show that he put on last week. Excuse me, playing a very good game uh, that led many to start wondering, is it time for Geno Smith to be traded? Because, hey, Bryce looks pretty good in the backup spot, so... There's definitely no future with Geno Smith as a member of the Jets. They might as well try and do something with him. Well, see, the tricky thing is he technically is still the only quarterback on the roster other than Fitzpatrick, behind Fitzpatrick, that has any real game experience. So that's the most difficult thing, in my opinion, is maybe the reason why they keep him. But if Bryce Petty keeps us up, they very well could trade him. Moving to Tennessee at Oakland in the Coliseum. That's going to be an interesting game, and that is the televised game. On Saturday, I meant to say the Tampa Bay-Cleveland game is televised as well, both on CBS, the game on uh, Friday. But Tampa Bay, I'm sorry, not Tampa Bay, Tennessee at Oakland. That'll be an interesting game to see finally, like, you know, a decent amount of time from the Oakland starters, a team that really is on the rise this year. A good young team, too. Think about some of their best players. You look at Amari Cooper, Derek Carr, Latavius Murray. Michael Crabtree had a great year for them last year in his debut Mm -hmm. season for the Raiders. Khalil Mack on defense, Carl Joseph, first-round pick out of West Virginia. Good young team. Going and getting Reggie Nelson, not necessarily younger. Also but brought in Bruce it. Irvin as a pass rusher from the Seahawks. And they got Sean Smith. And and I don't have anyone else to say. So you David Emerson. So you beat me there. David Emerson. From Khalil, Khalil formerly Mack, of the Bruce Redskins. Irvin. Yeah, all these guys, yeah. But yeah, the Raiders really, for once, they're that team that people actually predict to make that jump. You uh, yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I definitely have them jump. I mean, like I've told you numerous times, they were two games within – seven and nine and there was two games i can think of specifically against the steelers and against the vikings that they were in every second and almost won so they could have had a winning record last year let alone this year you know what i mean so i got them i got them winning nine games at least this year and yeah, unless they take team, an unpre- a pre- unprecedented and unpredicted step back i got them winning they're everyone's popular pick to <clears> sort of <throat> make that jump it's like them and the jaguars yeah mm-hmm. so in I think the, the ja- afc yeah. i think the jaguars are young 
and good, but I think they're too young to make that jump right away. You think maybe? I think maybe a year or two for Jacksonville. Yeah, I think maybe this year is more solid for the Raiders because they have a good mix of young and veteran. With with Jacksonville, I think the one thing is maybe maybe I give a year or two for their defense, but yeah. I think their offense is honestly really good. Blank, oh, I like uh, Blake offense. Bortles had a great year last year. Mm-hmm. Alan Robert. Blake Bortles. I know. You, you sound like you're going to say Blaine Gabbert. Oh, no, no. He didn't have great years with Jacksonville. Not really. But Blake Bortles, Allen Robinson had 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. They brought in Chris Ivory from New York. I think he's a good, solid running back, a good power back. They have a good running back core. TJ Yeldon, as a rookie from Alabama, had a great year last year. <clears throat> Their defense, they, they, you know, they have Gus Bradley, who used to be the coordinator in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Dante Fowler Jr. missed all of last year. So he's kind of coming in as a rookie as that pass rusher. Jalen Ramsey, you know, he had they a really also good had preseason Miles game. Jack from UCLA. Julius so. Thomas came on late last year. Yeah, they, they have a good, solid young core. Their offense, I think, is is pretty solid. Yeah. Their defense, maybe a year or two away. I agree with you on that. All right. Okay, moving to the last game on Saturday, and that is the Rams' first game outside of L.A. Featuring... It still sounds so weird saying the L.A. Rams See, again. See, because you know I'm, I'm so... With how I am with football, I'm so... I know a lot about football, including like the history of football. I'm I'm just familiar with saying the LA Rams and LA Raiders, so it doesn't really it's not weird to me. So LA Rams is like I'm I'm already kind of used to it. You know what I mean? I'm still I still keep wanting to say St. Louis. That's okay. I, I think I messed up. I have once. to not to, but you mm-hmm. know what I mean it's just it still sounds so weird. LA Rams again. So. Yeah. But the LA Rams are facing Denver at what I assume is going to be changed uh, soon enough. Sports Authority Field at Mile High. I worked at Sports Authority. That place went out of business. It yeah. it bankrupted the company, not just my like the company went out of business. So I assume that's going to change sometime. I believe they I believe they were having sort of an auction to see who would be. Yeah, I have to look into that again. See the naming on that field. Mm-hmm. I thought so. We'll see. But the Rams see some more Jared Goff action. You know, as we get closer to the regular season, you know he is the presumed starter. So we'll see how that goes. And then the Broncos see if somebody can really take a hold of this quarterback position, take the starting quarterback position. Simeon starting again this week. I'm sure Sanchez will get, you know, maybe some time with the starters plus week, you know, some team two. And then we'll see some more Paxton Lynch. He looked really good last week as well. You know, I really liked what I saw from him. Yeah, I think really this is the best case scenario for quarterback controversy. The best team to sort of have this battle yeah. going on. You look at teams like the Niners. Before Ryan Fitzpatrick resigned with the Jets, you had a little bit of a controversy there. But now it's really down to the Niners and the Broncos, the Broncos definitely in the better case of those two. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, especially since RG3 really took the job with the Browns. Okay, the last three games this week are all nationally televised. We have a 10 a.m. game. 10 a.m., that's what I said, on Fox. It's going to be just like, just like an actual NFL Sunday. Just like regular season, yeah. Yeah, so we have San Diego at Minnesota at, Un- at the new U.S. Bank Stadium. For the Vikings there. That's going to be a fun game to watch. Not really much I'm looking for in that game other than wanting to see the stadium. Some stuff like that. Followed by a 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time start on Fox. Again, just like NFL Sunday football. Arizona at Houston. See some more action from Brock Osweiler. Now that Tyron Matthew is cleared to practice, I still don't think he's going to be playing. No, I, so, I would imagine the Cardinals would keep him out. Yeah, I don't even know if he's starting the season, to be honest. I don't know how that, shit, how that um, situation's going. And in the same sense, Houston is keeping J.J. Watt. Obviously, he's not going to be anywhere near the field because he's probably not even going to start the season. So after having back surgery, and that moves us to Arizona, obviously, at Houston at NRG Stadium. But the last game of the week, and that is a 5 p.m. start Pacific Standard Time on NBC, just like a Sunday night game. Otherwise, this probably wouldn't be a Sunday night game because so far the competition wouldn't be one that they would put on Sunday. But it's Cincinnati at Jacksonville. Again, that is some more action I want to see from Jacksonville. That team has looked good. We just talked about a second ago. And Cincinnati, of course, keep an eye on them like always. We'll see how they shape out. I like watching uh, A.J. McCarron. He's a fun quarterback to watch. He played well in their preseason game last week. So it's definitely something I want to keep an eye on, Ben. And A.J. McCarron someone who has a lot of experience having to start that playoff game against the Steelers last year. The last few games that season, too. And really... With the exception of a few bonehead plays from Vontez Burvick and Pac-Man Jones, he maybe would have led them into winning that game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, or the other few, the, the Hill fumble, the Vontez, Pac-Man, yeah, all that stuff. Doesn't bother me anymore. Well, obviously, coming Ooh. out on the winning side, I don't think it would have. 
So, hey man, don't don't chastise me, okay? I'll try not to. Don't. I'll try not to. Don't creep. Okay. <laughs> creep. I make. I'll make sure I won't. How about that? I Good. will tell you I will not do that. High five. All right. Well, that is all we have for you on this episode. Next episode, we're gonna do some talk of Joey Bosa. We're going to talk Broncos quarterback situation, something we kind of talked to a second ago. And we are going to end, obviously, with our amazing What's Trending segment. But until then, we want to remind you guys, you can find us at gsmcpodcast.com as well as on Twitter and Instagram at gsmc underscore sports. You can listen to our show on any streaming platform under the following iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. You can find us on YouTube as well as Facebook at the GSMC Sports Podcast. And as always, I am Alex. And I'm Ben. And we will see you guys on our next show.